at the industrial estate in Waterford City shortly after 7 a.m. on a Sunday morning in September 93, a fork truck was being refuelled with propane. Tank and fork truck are located just out of camera shot with the top of the tank about one metre below the level of the grass bank. Here in a reconstruction we show an almost identical filling system with the fork truck in position. Please note the proximity of truck to the tank as this will play a critical role in how the incident evolves. During the filling process some propane was leaking at the cylinder coupling and while attempting to remove the filling valve there was a dramatic increase in the amount of product escape. This ignited probably from the truck engine or the electrics. The f operator activated the fire alarm and the factory was evacuated. Now we switch to a black and white video captured by the security cameras at the adjoining premises. The camera view is obstructed by trees and a steel electric pylon. Remember the top of the tank is about one meter below the camera line of view. The action of the video picture appears uneven as the removal of a feed from a second camera covering a different area has resulted in a 50% loss of video signal. As we can see the fire has increased in volume and intensity. It is believed that part of the filling hose close to the fork truck cylinder has failed due to the intense heat and is spraying burning liquid onto the top vapour space of the tank. Here we see the pressure relief valve opening, sending a column of flame about 15 metres into the air. The valve remains open for 53 seconds and then closes. Again the relief valve has opened and remains open for almost three minutes before closing. If we look carefully to the lower right corner of the screen, we can see the fire brigade has arrived and are struggling to get a water spray onto the tank and fire. Note the figures of the two firemen nearest the fire as we will see them again later.
the filling unit has completely disintegrated with components scattered over a wide area. Here we see the levy reproduced on a computer which would help explain the chain of events. The first tank rupture occurs at the top near the dished end. The end is sheared off and flung into the air. The rest of the tank is now propelled by the escaping and expanding fuel and collides with a machinery store about five metres away. The store is almost completely wrecked and a large steel girder is torn out and carried away. The shock of impact with the building has dislodged a further section of tank which falls to the ground. The remaining 50% of the vessel weighing a half a tonne continue skywards just glancing off the corner of the chemical store. The section of steel girder falls back to earth at the perimeter fence. The half tank section trailing fire like a rocket has disappeared over the trees in the distance. Here we see the damaged machinery store and the high level contact with the building holding highly flammable chemicals. The dished end has travelled about 150 metres into the empty car park of the manufacturing complex next door. The tank midsection has turned into a flat sheet of plate close to the point of contact with the building. The firemen, concerned about the whereabouts of the missing tank section, take to the air. It has landed in a cornfield about one kilometre from its original position. The two firemen seen earlier with the water hose showed the damage to their protective gear. They had just turned their backs to the fire when the explosion occurred. They were blown forward by the blast but were safe from injury by their equipment. Here we super see Supervisor Dan Dial having to call on all his diplomatic skills to explain to the lady of the house about the early morning arrival in her cornfield. <laughs> 